Good afternoon. Hi once again. It's episode number eight hundred and three, and the subject today is the power of reci- reciprocity or the reward, excuse me, of reciprocity. Reci- yeah, the saying it right. <laughs> How when you're out of out of alignment, or you're ba- you're out of balance with your givingness, the price you're paying in a relationship, and why it's not working, and how you can fix it. That's kind of what I'm talking about today. So, before I jump into the topic at hand, um, let me just jump in with a in this introduction of who I am, why I'm about, so you know I'm here, and thanks for joining me, thanks for sharing the love in here, thank you for being here. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live in case people watching other places are going, who am I talking to? So before I jump in, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't already figured that out. I am uh, the author of the best-selling book, international best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women, couples and singles. A great book to get you started on the road to having healthy relationships. Of course, I'm very biased about that. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which, which informs my work with women and why I work with, with women primarily because I'm in deep reverence for and, as I said, champion for the Divine Feminine. That's also what led to these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 803. So there's a bunch of these talks out there. And I will let you know at the back end of this broadcast the place you can find the replays in case you want to watch some of my other talks from the past two years. There's plenty out there. So the topic today is about reciprocity and also about giving and receiving and being out of balance with your giving in relationship. This is the thing that I've seen a lot. And I was talking to a a new um, client this morning about this, which is why it's so fresh in my mind. And what I'm speaking to is how relationships, instead of being giving and receiving, are give and take. And it means from the point of view that when you're in a relationship that's giving and receiving, it's a harmonious, it's a cycle of abundance, it's more of a flow and it's graceful, it's wonderful. When it's give and take, it's like you give, the other person takes. Or they give and you can take, it depends on which way you play this. The thing is that relationships aren't always experienced the way that they're planned. Now, that was a very broad statement, I know. <laughs> so I can put it another way. Oftentimes, well, there's two different ways people approach relationships. Two, say, in this case again, there are, these are two dysfunctional ways that people approach relationships. There's better ways besides this, but these are two ways people do this. One of them is they go into a relationship to see what they can get. And they're in the place to sort of get healed, to get fulfillment, to get sex, to get love, to get what they want. That's one approach. Another approach, which is also dysfunctional, and I'll explain in a moment why it is, where they get into relation to what they can give. They want to take care of the other person so much that everything's going to be great. They want to be able to make themselves validated, and this is the thing. For a lot of people, their validation comes from their givingness of presenting and being in that relationship. Actually, it's probably the way they give into life itself. There are people actually will do things in life to contribute, to make a difference, so they can be recognized for it. And that's a trap. So either approach is an unhealthy approach because there's no um, agreement of, recipro- of reciprocity in there. That was going to trip me up. And in relationships, as I've talked about many times, as you may have guessed if you've done all these talks, the relationship is more about balance in the sense that each partner contributes their uniqueness to the relationship and is received by the other person. In fact, a healthy relationship is one where both partners are excited to be present to the other person and also willing to receive. Now, let me say it's the individual for a second, because I just realize this point comes up. There are those of us who are much more effective at giving than we are at receiving. Anybody else that like that? You let me know in the comments. There are also those people who are more willing to receive than to give. Usually there's fewer people than that. Do, more, fewer people being receiving than giving. And I remember this lesson is one of my te- one of the teachings in one of the seminars I took years and years ago about abundance, is that if there's, take a, sort of take example for the room that we were in, let's say there's 200 people in the room. And so, okay, okay, who in this room is a giver? And 150 people put their hands up. And then, okay, who here is a good receiver? Maybe 30 people put their hands up. Some of the people don't put their hands up at all. The question that comes up is, if you're in relationships and everyone's paired up, there's going to be an imba- imbalance because there are more people giving than there are receiving. That's out of alignment and, uh, and, and out of balance. So basically, your ability to give is being stalled because the person you're giving to is not receiving it. So it's equally important that you have the ability to give and to receive and that you're with a partner who can also give and receive. 
Now, this is, gonna, this is one of those things where it's not something circular. Let me just give you a quiz and you can give me, you can give me the answers back to your future partner. But it's something that can definitely be part of the, um, how do I say this? It's part of the puzzle of how to understand relationships. Now, as I said, I've done 800 and, well, include this one now, 803 talks about love and relationships. There's a lot to talk about. And there's a lot of pieces to unpack from relationships. So this is one of those spokes of the wheel or one of those pieces of the puzzle. And is one is one of the more simpler ones because it's easy to realize when in a relationship, where it is you give more than maybe you should, and where it is you receive more than you should. I'm using you should in quotes because it's always a flexible language, flexible title. So here's the thing. Many people in relationships find out that their partner and they are not on the same they're not on the same level when it comes to giving and receiving. It's out of balance, as I mentioned. At first, that's fine. It's not a big deal. But what happens is, in a very short period of time, usually, there is a level of um, resentment that shows up from one to the other. If you're the person that basically is always giving because you feel like you need to give to contribute or to be validated or whatever it is, the other person is always receiving, at some point in time, you're going to be resentful because they're not giving it back to you. Again, not a healthy relationship. On the other side of it, you can be in a place where you're the receiver Again, this is a rarer, but uh, generally a rarer part of the population. Any person who's giving to you, and you want to give back to them in some way, and they're not willing to receive. Again, it's out of balance. So if you're in the giving camp, ask yourself this question. Why am I so focused on giving and less on receiving? Because one of two things is going on, often. I think it's two things. If you are giving, and you are passionate about giving all the time, do you feel better or more superior than other people because you've got what you have? Do you feel like you need to give so you can be validated and express that people thank you for, for your giving? Just a thought. On the receiving side, if you don't want to receive, again, you're giving more than you're receiving, do you carry a sense of unworthiness that you don't deserve receiving? Because that was one of mine, so maybe I'm the only one on the planet who had that one, but I don't think so. So the, giving, the overgiving comes from two different places. One is the giving to prove something, giving to do something, giving to demonstrate, giving to somehow elevate yourself, and also to cover up the fact you're not willing to receive because you don't feel like you deserve it. Either one of those, there's some work to do. Thank you. Hi, Karen. Nice to see you, August. Yes, exactly. You jumped ahead of me. Yes, receiving can feel more vulnerable than giving too. Yes, and that's a part of it too, is that that worthiness is part of it, but also the receiving. Thank you for adding that in for me. I'll use that is the sense that it's not always feeling safe to receive. So trusting your partner can be part of the issue there. And trusting yourself as well, by the way, because trust is a thing that works inside. So what I'm saying about giving and receiving is there's a lot to unpack if you're willing to look at your skill set, if you're willing to, not skill set, your, your default behaviors, and if you're willing to look at where you may be missing out on things. Because the thing is, when you learn how to receive fully, especially sexually and sensually and intimately with your partner, it will transform your experience of intimacy that you've ever had before. A lot of my friends who are in the Tantra teachings and sexuality and type teachings are very big about how people aren't willing to open to receive. Because this is one of those things. It's about safety. It's about that, that worthiness that are in the way of them feeling okay to have that happen for them. So when you're giving, it can be a cover that up. But there are also people on the other side of things where they're not willing to give either. So on that side of things, some may be very comfortable receiving. Maybe because in a negative sense, maybe they'll always be the one that's been taking the punishment from other people and feel like that's all they can do. Whether or not they're being given punishment or not, they take it that way because of their upbringing. That's a whole other topic about abuse and other things too. But there are many people out there where receiving is actually what they do because that's the thing they were trained to do because they weren't allowed to stand up for themselves. So for some people, being a receiver is because they're afraid to stand up for themselves to give back or to hold their ground or to say no. So for some people, receiving is not even a choice. It's almost like they have to because they don't have the wherewithal to say no enough because of the way they were raised. And, and, and that's one of the clues, by the way. All this giving and receiving stuff oftentimes is wired up when we're very young. I did a whole talk about this two days ago. Yeah, two days ago about how I said your inner child running a dating life. This is another piece of the puzzle. There's so many pieces of the puzzle. That our giving and receiving muscles are developed when we're very young. And part of that is because we're trained by those we're around. 
So parents, siblings, aunts and uncles, peer groups will teach us how to give and receive when we don't actually decide for ourselves yet. So again, receiving can have issues big time. So can giving have issues big time. So if you're not in balance with your giving and receiving, I would suggest, I would say, that your um, opportunity to become more balanced is where your freedom is. That if you take the time to learn and to investigate, that's a better word of using it, but to, re to basically look at yourself and look at where you're giving and receiving is out of whack, out of balance, or not aligned to your truth. And actually, let me, do, let me put another piece on that one. When you're giving and receiving, it would ideally be some of that's playful, joyful, and uplifting. If it ain't those things, there's something missing. That's kind of a good barometer to get you sense of a way of giving and receiving could be out of alignment. So whether you're single or in a relationship, you can look at this one, because if you're single, look back at your past relationships. If you're, give, if you're in a relationship, you look at what you're presently doing. How easy is it to give? How easy is it to receive? How easy is your partner receiving you? How easy is your partner giving to you? If you're single, again, Look at your past relationships. How, how in balance or how out of balance was that? Simply put, if you don't want to repeat it, then it's time to do some changes. And one of those things is to look at your own experience. What was your early learning about giving and receiving? Where was it okay? Where was it not okay? Where was it safe? Where wasn't it safe? Where was it demanded? Where was it open? Find out for yourself, and if you want to work with me, I can help you with this, but find out for yourself where your wiring is set up to have you believe one thing over another one, that giving is better than receiving or receiving is better than giving, or you have no choice, you have to just put up with what you get. All these different things, these different flavors, is gonna impact your ability to have fully immersive relationship. But when you understand this and you do the work to unfold it, then the whole area of relationship where it becomes the reciprocal part of giving and receiving becomes effortless and becomes very joyful. Again, if your experience of giving and receiving is joyful, is positive, uplifting, and playful, and enjoyable, and your partner's experience is the same as that too, then you're doing it right. Or you should say you're doing it more effectively. I won't say right, because there's no right or wrong in this. But if you're finding yourself challenged in this area, and you do want to get some support to rearrange that wiring, to change your programming, so you don't keep doing the same old patterns again, then you can let me know about that. I can help you with that. Hi, Karen, what's that you're saying? So you use you used to be a chronic giver in relationships. It didn't feel safe for you to receive, and it also made you feel more in control. That was the other one. Thank you, control. You, thank you, Karen. You're giving me great content for my talk. But yes, I totally feel where you're coming from, and I'm glad that you said that you used to be. So I'm glad you got, over, got through that. But that's the other part too, by the way. Some people for, well, for some people, giving is a sense of control because you don't want to be receiving because, again, if receiving doesn't feel safe, it'd be better to be in control. So give and give and give. So there's no room to receive. Add a balance in relationships. So there's lots of pieces to the puzzle here. And for me, it's a powerful um, understanding. It's funny you said, this was just a conversation I had with a client this morning, that this really is a piece that can be unpacked because in her, her experience, it was something that happened when she was younger, but it's playing out now as an adult and she just tied it together and said, oh, now she sees, which is great. But now we're doing the unpacking, so we're gonna go back into that younger, age, younger age and change the relationship between giving and receiving in her life and to take off the, um, the breaks and the locks that may be on, installed on top of it because they're not meant to be there. Giving and receiving it is ideally a free experience for everybody, but all of us have our own different filters, locks, limits, traps, things around it that make it harder to do. I invite you to examine your own giving and receiving balance. How, how is your recipro recipro reciprocity, say the right way around? <laughs> How is it for you to have giving and receiving being in a balance? If they're out of balance, it's time to do some work. And if you don't have the ability to do either one of them, you definitely got time to do some work. So I'll leave a couple of links in the comments for you to check out. Um, one of the comments will be a discovery session with me, complimentary clarity conversation with me. Um, the book's going to be in there, of course, because the book is something I talked about at the beginning. And this is something I want to give you as a, as a reminder. You're welcome, Karen. Thanks for watching and thanks for, thanks for adding content to my talk. I appreciate it. Um, I'm also going to put in the comments my self-love practice. I keep doing that because it's a reminder. Because if you do the self-love practice that's in my course, sorry, that's in my, um, the link will be in the comments. It's a guided meditation where you get to give and receive at the same time. So this is a little exercise you can do on your own, in your own time, 
we get to give and receive in the moment and it will change things for you as well so it's a powerful little tool that, ha that, that works on different levels so I'll put that link in the comments too so three links um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before if you're just joining me for the first time where have you been? <laughs> this is my daily talk as I mentioned I do this every day at 5pm Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby you can watch me here the replays if you're watching this in replay you're watching it in one or two places and if you haven't found my replays here's where you find them First of all, I have the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page and follow me there. And secondly, I have the replays on my business, sorry, on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby again. Please subscribe to that. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. By the way, all my social media is Barry Selby, except Instagram. I've got, a, I'm still trying to get back on there. If you know any connections to Instagram, please let me know, because I'm still trying to get my Instagram account back on again. I got booted about mm, almost a year ago now and haven't been able to get it back in with requests to customer support. Anyway, total separate so topic. Uh, there's a lot of give and receiving missing there. Yeah, another talk. I appreciate being with me as always. I thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments about this, please put them below. If you want to share it with anybody, please do. If you want to get some help, links will be in the comments. I'm here to help you and I appreciate your support, of course, and for your willingness to take care of yourself. So I invite you to take care of yourself as always because when you take care of yourself, the rest of the world works much more smoothly. So thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. See you again soon. Bye.